Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast show. It's Expresso on S3. And being connected at work, it really gets the job done. But can we be too connected in a digital world of work or even just in our normal everyday lives? That's the question for today. And that's why the term digital fatigue has taken such prominence over the last few years and why we continue to talk about it today. Absolutely. And here to explore that term a little bit more is Dr. Cheryl Calder from iGym, as well as Natalie Williams, Senior Social Impact Manager from uh, To You, and also Bianca von Art and Zoe Human from the Expresso Digital team for a first-hand experience. Thank you very much for joining us. Lovely to have you, and I'm so happy we are talking about this. It is no secret, Dr. Cheryl, I'm going to start with you, that we live in a digital age. Screens are part of our lives every single day. Um, and this is, brings us to digital fatigue. And maybe you can unpack it for us exactly. How do we classify digital fatigue? What exactly is it? What does it look like? Yeah, it's, um, uh, I, I actually call it digital decline mm. because it, it, it has enormous effect on, on every, everything you do, on performance. Mm. Um, obviously, I'm a sports scientist. So I deal with sporting teams and sportsmen, and I've definitely seen a decline in skill level really? because of um, too much dig digital screens. Um, so it has a major role to play not only in sport but in everyday life. Um, I always explain to people, uh, you sit on a screen all day and when you go off to lunch, you're on your phone. So people are spending um, probably anything between seven and 12 hours a day on a screen. And you get in your car and you think, I must react and make decisions and respond in my peripheral and judge depth. And meanwhile, while we're on these screens, we're de deteriorating those skills. Absolutely, and I think the most scary thing is the fact that you know, people might not even know that they suffer they from digital they fatigue. And they this don't. is why it's important to have this discussion this morning. Definitely. Natalie, actually, let's jump in on that. I mean, hearing Dr. Calder explain what digital fatigue is, mm -hmm. is that something you've experienced? Is that something oh, you sure. perhaps, did you realize you were experiencing it in the moment? No, I don't think so. It's for sure something I've experienced, um, more so in the last three years, obviously since the pandemic. But I think it kind of started to say it even before that. I think it, the pandemic just put a spotlight on that. Um, and we do so much online, right? I studied for a year online last year, in addition to working remotely, in addition to always being on my phone as my downtime. Um, so it kind of creeps up on you. And before I knew it, I was like, oh, OK, <laughs> I, need, I need to take a second, right? Um, so it's for sure something I think we don't even realize that we're trying to combat um, or, or rather need to combat. Yeah. I've, I've certainly felt the, the effects of it in my, in my own life. Yeah. I mean, if you, have you at any point realized that, oh, this is digital fatigue or, you know, how did you kind of experience it, you know, having been on screens all the time, studying online? Yeah, you know, it was, it was more that I just started to feel out of sorts and started to go down a little rabbit hole of what is that feeling? What am I, what, what is this that's kind of setting in here? Um, and I landed on too, many, too much screen time. Um, and it's one of those, you know, when you feel productive, but you also feel kind of social on, on, uh, on your screen, so you don't feel like it's a problem. But the more I started to dig away at it, I realized it was, it was just too much screen time. Um, yeah. And I landed on digital fatigue um, and digital burnout, and I realized I, I for sure am experiencing both things, or have experienced both things, and, and then have, you know, started to do things to counter that. Yeah, I think I've I experienced at maybe a bit more of an extreme level when I was still doing my honors in journalism. Yeah, I think the whole point is to, to be online and you need to get the, the newest story and the latest story. And I would find myself sleeping and my sports watch would go off and I'd shake myself awake and I wouldn't even be wearing it. I would hear oh, like, wow. like noises from like technology that wasn't even there. And it's at that point that I was like, okay, let me put, go back to like an analog watch. Let me <laughs> actually just whew, breathe. Yeah, because detox I can, a yeah, little bit. Yeah, 100%. But do you, do you struggle with that? I mean, Bianca, Zoe, I mean, your, your, your job description is digital content creator, producer, whatever the exact role is, it is digital. Mm. Do you find that, you know, it's, it's, it's not only your job, but also as a form of personal time, we tend to also then spend time on screens. Have you found some sort of, sort of balance? Yeah, I think that's the question we all try to, to try and find some balance. Right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Whether you're in the content creation space and you're working, or you're just working on a computer for nine hours a day, mm. it's exactly that. It's like trying to find 
measures that you can put in place to set boundaries or how you can balance it out, but also, like Natalie said, realizing that is it screen time that is actually the problem? And like, are you going from computer to TV to your phone and thinking you're taking a break from work, mm. but then you're still spending time on a screen? Mm -hmm. Dr. Kelda, I want to ask you, you know, with regards to digital fatigue, you mentioned that it can have serious <laughs> mental effects yeah. on you, negative mental effects, but how do you combat that? Is it as easy as turning off the screen, putting the phone down, yeah. or, or is it a longer process that you no, need to look at? You, you need to make a decision. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we kind of expect it to be on our phone, so if you contact me, you expect me to answer. Yeah. So we have this um, expectation um, around us. You need to make an absolute decision. Um, I talk about um, digital timeouts, and you've, uh, that might be the first way of doing it, you know, saying between one and two in the day, I'm not using my phone, or before I get up, I'm not gonna look at my phone. So you can put these little rules in place, um, not just for yourself, but for kids. I mean, parents should be I was about to ask, doing it for yeah. their kids on, um, on a daily basis. Um, I, I call it, um, there's a book that was written by Brad Huddleston. He talks about digital cocaine, oh. and, it, and it actually is mm. an addiction. It's an addiction. You, you can't help yourself because they, I can explain to you later, you know, why it happens. So it's, that's what happens. Well, I'm looking forward to that. Well, we are not going anywhere. We are continuing our conversation. Of course, we would love for you to weigh in. So feel free to send us a voice note. Our number is 063-408-8863. We will be continuing this conversation shortly. It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back. You are tuning into your Feel Good Breakfast show. What a wonderful morning and a rather important topic this morning as well. Dr. Sheila Calder from iGym and the rest of our digital panel are back to continue and discuss digital fatigue and the effects that it could have on other aspects of our lives. Now, also terms screen burnout. Now, this is not a new discovery. However, it has been brought to the forefront since the COVID-19 pandemic. From working from home to staying entertained and connected with others, digital technology has never been so popular. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere. It is. Everywhere. And, we, and we're trying to find that balance. So, Dr. Calder, I just want to know from you, how can we find that balance between working on our digital, you know, platforms, whether it's your laptop, your cell phone, and having your personal time, your entertainment, but avoiding the burnout. <laughs> yeah, well, there, there are ways of doing it. Obviously, I come from a, if I, if I talk in real layman's terms, you can actually become, if you want to call it, digitally fitter. So you can actually train your eyes and your brain to be fitter to counter the effects of, of digital overuse. So there are ways of doing it. Um, and then you have to make a conscious decision about how much time I'm going to spend, when I'm not going to spend time. And I, I just think sometimes we just have excuses all the time and we, we just use our phone. And I mean, if, if you see people driving, you know, mm. everyone are on their phones. Even if you just make that decision yeah. while I drive, I'm not doing it. You'll already well, you be, should. You'll be, <laughs> yeah, well, you should, but we don't. You know, it's just getting yeah. worse. So that would be a good time to have a timeout, I would imagine. Because you spoke about it being addictive. It is. And I think this is the problem. Um, I don't think we, we recognise, because, I mean, many of us out there, uh, you know, especially when it comes to the end of the day, you had already a lot of screen time. Mm. You would maybe sit in bed and you'd start scrolling through social media. And before you know it, an hour and a half, two hours went yeah. by because yeah. you get so sucked in. Is, yeah. is this pretty much what you're talking about? Yeah, I mean, what's happening, getting an overload of information, um, mm. you know, and if, if you if you overload any computer, you know, if you overload your brains or overload any it's computer, gonna it's going to crash. It's going <laughs> to crash somewhere. So um, most of the information that we looking on TikTok or whatever we're on actually has no role to play in our lives and it has no value in our lives. But it's because it's addictive, yeah. um, if, if you read some of Steve Jobs' um, information, he'll tell you that they were, phones were designed, mm. smartphones were designed to be addictive, mm. and that he sure. never allowed his kids to go on any, any devices because he knew the bad effects of it. So it's not only our faults. You know, th th those um, devices, mainly smartphones, have, have actually been designed to do that to us. Sure. So you have to make a conscious decision. It is one. Or find a way to train. Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. An antidote. <laughs> Natalie, when you step away from your computer, your phone, 
is, is what type of feelings go through your, your mind and body? Is it, is it one of being anxious? Is it perhaps a positive relief? How, how do you feel when you don't have access to your phone and laptop? Panic is the first <laughs> feeling oftentimes, especially depending on time of day and time of week. Um, but I think because I'm so used to having technology attached to me in some way, if I immediately feel, the first feeling is for sure, uh, like something is missing. But I counter that by adding something else, as in go outside, um, play with my dog, or take him for a walk or something. Um, and then it starts to feel peaceful. It takes a second, but, but yeah, I mean, I suppose because yeah. it's so addictive, like you do feel, the, the withdrawal almost immediately starts to set in. Um, so I very deliberately, and, and you're right, I think it is, it is a choice you have to make to um, either add corrective action, I suppose, in a way, which is maybe get outside, which is probably the thing that holds me the most, or mm. really, and really start to set those boundaries with people too, because there is that expectation that you'll be always on and always available. Yeah, I mean, this is such, um, I, th I think, <laughs> almost like a, a dangerous scenario to be in because we speak about it as yeah, it's digital fatigue, we're on screens of that, but it is, like you rightly said, it's an addiction. There's those immediate and real feelings of panic yeah. when you don't have your device with you. Now, for our social media team, <laughs> Bianca, Zoe, I mean, what have you guys physically done and decisions that you have made to, to kind of safeguard yourselves against those particular feelings? I have a personal rule. Um, I don't watch anything in the week. Um, so Monday to Friday, besides working on my computer, I don't watch series or movies or anything, or YouTube or anything after I've done my work at night. Mm -hmm. I leave that for the weekend. And that that's- difficult? No, no it's <laughs> not, because I work so much. <laughs> <laughs> so there's not a lot of free time. But, uh, so I kind of leave that screen time entertainment rather for the weekend yeah. and not, and then when I finish work, that's it. Yeah. Be intentional off screens, uh, also just shutting down so I can go to bed early and be up early. I think that's um, the key word, being intentional with yeah. it. And Zoe, think, what about I you? I definitely think it's difficult, especially with load shedding. I mean, you live with people, it's nice, you can chat. Me, if I'm by myself, I'm like, okay, what, what are do? we doing within ourselves? And I remember last week, my eye was twitching. I was still telling you about it for a whole day. My one eye was twitching and I was feeling, I, then I put on my glasses and I was like, okay, this is better. But I could feel the effects of every screen. Even in my car, I could feel like, the radio, I could feel the, the treadmill in the gym, I felt all of it. So it was really about finding new activities that you can actually do during load shedding, especially because that eye strain at, in the dark, it's, mm. it's not cute. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been a bit of a challenge, but I personally like to follow the 20-20-20 rule. Mm. So if you've been behind a screen for 20 minutes, take a 20 second break, look at something 20 feet in the distance and just breathe because it really helps with training your eyes as well. Or I suppose the doc could give more information. Yeah, I've that. actually adjusted that. I, I call it the 10-10-10 rule. Ah. Because every 10 minutes, doesn't matter where you are, if we're in the studio, look up as far as you can, mm. 10 meters at least, um, and do it for 10 seconds. Yeah. And then come back. Because the eyes were never designed to be here. They were designed to look out there and yeah. look far and et cetera. Now we're doing something adverse to them and we're in here all the time. So. Looking up, that's a, that's a great rule to have. But I would say every 10, 10 minutes. Well, there we go. Some great tips being shared. And of course, perhaps you would love to share how you are combating that digital fatigue, perhaps some of those personal rules or restrictions you've put in, not only for yourself, but for your kids. You are welcome to join this conversation. Our number is 063-408-8863. Stick around. Our panel is not going anywhere. We've got another conversation with them coming up. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back. You are tuned into your Feel Good Breakfast Show. What a wonderful Tuesday morning. And we are wrapping up our discussion on digital fatigue with Dr. Cheryl Calder and the rest of our panel. Now, 32% of consumers reported feeling overwhelmed by tech devices and subscription management during the pandemic. And now for parents with small children, this number increases to 43%. Scary. And it is quite scary. And Dr. Calder, I actually connected with a friend yesterday that has an almost two-year-old, and she mentioned that they've learned if they cut all screen time after in the afternoons, she actually sleeps better at night. What are some of the impacts that you have noticed coming from parents and screen time and perhaps lack of boundaries? Um, I, I think kids rule nowadays. Um, I think parents need to be a lot... Um, I don't know if you call it stricter, 
because you're actually giving your kid a gift if you take them off those devices. Mm. Um, as hard as it may seem. As hard as it may seem, um, you're actually doing good to them. And then talking about sleep, um, the uh, devices um, emit blue light. And the blue light in, in layman's terms is really saying, don't sleep, don't sleep, don't sleep. And I know of not just kids, I know of a lot of grown-ups who get into bed at night and play games, um, and then it affects their sleep patterns. And if your sleep gets affected, it affects your performance. Um, so it has a really a vicious circle, um, mm. but for kids especially, I mean, sleep is, is really important. Yeah, um, especially if you think about the pressures that schools place on them as well. They need exactly. to be able to perform. Uh, we did ask you to get involved, and we want to hear from you as well. We do have a comment from Anonymous this morning. It's a voice note. Let's, let's take a listen. Morning Expresso, very interesting topic. Uh, I find all my solutions that I've put in place are also met with screens these days. I've got a dog that I take for a walk, and as soon as we're out and there's a beautiful picture, I take it, so my phone comes out. If I get in my car to take go for a drive, I'm met with five screens. It's not like you can take your eyes off the speedometer, which is now these days digital. I just find it's very interesting we're trying to combat and trying to get rid of screen time when the more technology evolves, the more screens there are. So I think, is it more just trying to manage it rather than trying to restrict yourself? Yeah. yeah, I think, thank you very much for the comment, Anonymous. I think trying to restrict yourself, you know, uh, it, is, it is tough because, like you rightly said, there's screens all around us wherever we go. Um, but it comes down to the management. Yeah. Now, I want to ask our digital team, and Natalie, you as well. I mean, with regards to the management, how have you found that maybe in a space where you were digitally fatigued, how does that impact your day-to-day -day kind of activities, your relationships, the way you interact with people? Have you found anything like that? Yeah, I think after, well, in COVID, it completely shifted how we communicate with people. After that, I think people had this expectation that they could have access to you constantly. Mm -hmm. And I think I've had to be very clear with my friends that, listen, I've worked in social media my entire day. For you, it might be a break from your, your yeah. work now, and you might find this as a time to communicate. For me, that's the last thing I want to do in my day is be on my phone and chat. So call me if you need me or come see me, but don't <laughs> text me. Please don't text me. Yeah. Yeah, I absolutely agree with Zoe there. It's like when you've been on social media for the whole day, you don't even want to put in the effort for your own social media anymore or like interact anymore. But I think that links into social isolation that's also come from the pandemic is now we're not even having person-to-person -person interaction anymore because we're constantly on WhatsApp or other platforms talking to our colleagues, talking to our friends, talking to our family. And so, yes, you constantly... Now you're breaking from screen time for work, but now you need to interact with your family and friends on screens as well. Um, but I think for me, it was just being really intentional, uh, setting, like Dr. Kelz said, setting a digital timeout. But for me, it's like closing all the screens, walking away, going for a run outside, outside of nature. And for the first 10 minutes, I have that complete panic. What if that email comes in right now? Mm -hmm. uh, but then the endorphins start kicking in and you feel better and it's just you just get that fresh start. So you just have to really be intentional about those boundaries that you set. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, I actually found that it was easier to add than to remove, to, than to remove initially anyways. Like so, because I spent a year doing nothing but looking at screens and I think we can't deny the value that, that we have. Yeah you know, having access to all things digital technology. So yeah. we have to integrate it, right? Um, so I added time outside versus thinking about taking away time off my screen. Um, and that kind of, it started to displace some of the screen time. So I would spend more time outside, less time on screen. Mm -hmm. 30 minutes became 40 minutes outside, you know? Um, it felt easier and perhaps less intimidating yeah. To, to think about adding activity um, and changing up how I socialize with my friends because I also lived alone during lockdown. So there was the way that I c connected with people was digitally. The minute that I could, I changed that to like, let's go for a walk instead. Um, and yes, you know, to the, to the, uh, the voice note, to the caller's um, point, um, it, it becomes a, it's hard to, to remove ourselves um, from those things and and so you, i would go outside for a walk and take that photo and put my phone away so it's not to say don't engage you just have to start to be yeah. really conscious of it and, Look, and uh, adding nature mm -hmm. help me adding nature exactly yeah. take a breath go yeah. exercise but i mean the fact is in today's day and age we we almost cannot live without screens yeah. Yeah. do you think but you could have walked without your phone 
could have gone for a walk, walk I, with Archer I Frank? don't think so, because no. not from, from a safety point of view, no. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I had to have it with yeah, me, but I just had sense. to be conscious of how I'm doing it. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Like, like I rightly said, you know, I think, you know, we can't do without screens, yet we are still human. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we function in a human way. We are not robots. So maybe a last comment from you, Dr. Calder. Um, how do we, because you mentioned training ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, to become more digitally fit. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? How do we do that to do it in a safe and efficient way? Yeah, so the most important thing, our eyes were not designed to be in here. Mm -hmm. You know, our eyes were designed to scan, look far, move, etc. And everything we're doing now is right in here. So yeah. you can, it's almost like an overuse of, of any system. I mean, overuse of your physical system will also have yeah. bad effects if you overtrain, etc. Now we're doing it with the eyes and the brain all the time. So um, I train I try to do it every day. Um, I, I have, I have iGym that I can train on, so I try to do it every day, and um, I can feel the difference when I do it. So uh, the eyes can be trained, the brain can be trained. Um, overuse of digital is deteriorating that ability, so we need to find an antidote. Mm -hmm. So yes, going for walks is fantastic. Let your kids play outside every single day. Don't ever go have a day where they don't play outside. Um, go for walks, use your eyes in the way they were designed to be used, um, find a training program where you can train those skills. Because it's not possible to always go for walks and get your kids to play yeah. outdoors, especially in the winter time. So just there are ways of, of training that. Okay. Amazing. Well, Doctor, mm -hmm. thank you for joining us. Natalie, Bianca, Zoe, thank you for being part of our discussion. And thank you to you for weighing in. And of course, digital fatigue, as you've heard, it is real. Screens are around us constantly. It's one of those things we just need to put those boundaries in place. But thank you for joining us today on our conversation.